On this channel, we've seen some good graphics cards come from China, but also, let's say some, uh, questionable quality items. Like having 16GB of VRAM on a super old GPU. Like what person or people sat down in a room and said, you know what we need to sell? Double the VRAM on this RX 580. But for this graphics card that we're about to see, I actually think this could be very useful to someone. So here it is. Just by looking at the package, you probably can't even tell what's so special about it. Apart from the artwork being a sports car going through the Windows default background. Like, this artwork might be the worst of the Chinese GPUs I've seen. But look, we're not here to judge the artwork. It's what's on the inside that actually counts. So on the side, we can see that this graphics card says Professional Graphics Card. I guess it's for, like, professionals instead of gaming. Look, I don't really know, to be honest. But when we flip it over onto this side, you may be able to see why this card is kind of cool. Or you already saw it from the title. It says RX 580 HDMI 6. And obviously they didn't make HDMI version 6, so that means there are 6 HDMI ports on this single graphics card, which is practically unheard of. On the back, we can see the, um, key features, let's say, that they so proudly show off. Like we have independent research and development. Well, I guess they did have to stick on a few DisplayPort adapters to get this many HDMI ports. Yes, this is actually using DisplayPort. We will get onto that later. High quality components, long life slash quiet, double space, ball bearing, which is definitely not true because this fan spins at idle and is far from silent. And then we have the best desing of thermal structure, not really sure what they mean by that, and stability performance, which is just some words they use to make it sound better than it is. Now, in the box we get the graphics card and this sheet of paper telling us how to install it. Nothing else. And here is the graphics card. It actually looks pretty good. The whole of the housing is made from metal and there are pretty much no plastic pieces on the card, so it does actually feel quite premium. And... No, wait. There's a 6-pin power connector on the back. That means this GPU is an RX 580-2048SP. I'm pretty sure all the real 580s use 8-pin connectors. Here are the 6 HDMI ports crammed onto this IO shield. Supposedly, each of these ports are HDMI 1.4, meaning you can get up to 4K at 30Hz on each screen, or you can do 1080p at 120Hz, and that's really decent. They even sell a version with HDMI 2.0, meaning you can get 4K at 60Hz on 6 monitors. If, like me, you're wondering how they managed to get 6 HDMI ports on this card, well, they have 4 HDMIs on the bottom, each with the HDMI chip, and then they have this flex cable which connects to this smaller board at the top, and that has 2 additional HDMI ports. So this graphics card is an RX 580-2048 SP, so unsurprisingly it has 2048 stream processors, a clock speed of 1284 MHz, 4GB of GDDR5 memory, but you can get 8, although that wasn't available when I got this card, a TDP of around 80 watts apparently, according to them, which does seem a little low, and of course 6 HDMI 1.4 ports. And for the pricing, this card cost $125, which is pretty expensive for an RX 580-2048 SP. But, think about it this way. The alternatives are you use two graphics cards, but then you need two GPUs and you can't use AMD iFinity for one display. Or alternatively, you can use a DisplayPort to HDMI splitter, one of those multi-monitor ones. But then you're looking at $95 for a three-way adapter, or $40 for a two-way adapter. So you're probably going to end up spending the same amount on the cost of the adapter, and it may not even work that well, as a lot of people have said. Not only this, but you are limited to 1080p at 60Hz if you use this 3-way adapter, and it can get pretty messy with all the wiring. So actually, I don't think $125 is that bad of a price. Okay, so let's set this up so we can test some games out. Oh my god, I'm going to need to buy 6 monitors, aren't I? Okay, so I've got 6 of these HDMI 25-inch 1080p IPS monitors from MSI, and they look quite good. They cost $75 each for a total cost of $450. In the box, we have all our usual cables and stands for the monitor, but we're not going to be using this, as AMD iAffinity only supports 6 monitors in a 3x2 config. I think it would probably look better having the monitors in a line vertically, but apparently only 5 monitors is supported that way. So we have a 4 monitor stand and a 2 monitor stand, because I couldn't find a decent price 6 monitor stand. And we're going to set those up. Oh, and that set us back another $85. 
and now we can put the monitors on and wire everything up. And sure enough it is working, and it looks so strange having 6 cables coming out of your GPU. And as we can see here we have an RX 580-2048 SP detected in GPU-Z, with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. So now all I need to do to start playing some games is to set up the monitors in the correct order on Windows, and then go onto AMD software to run AMD iFinity, and that set up everything for me, like it was super simple. And it appears all the monitors are working fine, and they even run at 100Hz, which is the max refresh rate of these monitors. And do you remember when I said this card was using DisplayPort adapters? Well, here you can see that the monitors are detected as DisplayPort in AMD software. Basically, it has built in chips on the card which split the DisplayPort feed into multiple HDMI ports with MST. So let's launch a game, starting with GTA 5. So already I was kind of running into problems, but not in the traditional sense, because it was due to the lack of video memory. 4GB doesn't really cut it for gaming these days, and especially not at this resolution, which is like 5K ish, coming in at 5760 by 2160p. So I turned all the settings down to high with no anti aliasing, and we were getting 27.6 FPS on average, which actually isn't too bad. The 1% and 0.1% lows were at 20 and 19.7 FPS respectively, which is way better than I thought it would perform at this high resolution. Pretty impressed. As for playing GTA 5 on 6 monitors, I would say this was a success, as the playing screen was massive and an overall enjoyable experience and it wasn't even affected that badly by the bezels. I mean, let's get this straight, they are very noticeable, but you could easily ignore them after playing for a while. It would be even better if these monitors were actually aligned properly, but adjusting these stands, which are two separate stands mind you is extremely difficult because they just don't go where you want them to go. Next I tested out Red Dead Redemption 2 at the lowest settings. I even had to turn on AMD FSR 2 to balanced. I didn't want to, but I couldn't get that memory usage below 4GB otherwise, so I guess the game's not actually running at the full resolution, but it still managed to achieve 18.6 FPS on average, which is uh, not great, but at least you can play the game. This GPU would be a lot better if it was the 8GB version, but it also got a 1% low of 15.3 and a 0.1% low of 15.1 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the lowest settings was also quite playable with 21.1 FPS on average. It had a 1% and 0.1% low of 16.9 and 6.9 FPS. This game is a bit of an older game, so it makes sense that it would run okay. I think realistically, this resolution is way too high for this GPU, even on this game though. There was a bit of stuttering here and there, but it was overall quite smooth, or at least as smooth as 20 FPS can actually provide. Spider-Man Remastered at the very low preset gave us just 17.5 FPS, with a 1% low of 8.1 and a 0.1% low of 4.3 FPS. Yep, that's not great. It is however a slightly more demanding game, and I suppose you could play like this, but probably you'll end up using like 1 or 3 monitors instead of 6. I first tested Cyberpunk at the low preset with AMD resolution scaling on balanced, and we got a somewhat respectable 17 FPS with a 1% low of 13.6 and a 0.1% low of 13.3 FPS. So I thought then that I could test it with no resolution scaling, and I wish I hadn't, because we only got 6.9 FPS, and it was choppy as hell. So I think Cyberpunk on 6 monitors with an RX 580 is probably one to miss. CS2 at the lowest settings was actually one of the best performing games we had. It got 53.6 FPS on average. However, on CS you really need more than 60 FPS to play competitively, so it wasn't ideal. But there was an even bigger problem than that, and that was the fact that your crosshair is literally split between two, on two different displays. And that makes it pretty difficult to play because sometimes you literally don't know which part you're supposed to be looking at. Yeah, I think there's a good reason why an odd number of displays is recommended for iAffinity because at least the middle of the screen won't be split into two displays. On Resident Evil 3, I could actually have the settings on medium instead of low. Yeah, shocking right, I know. And we got 31.1 FPS, which is the second highest score we've seen all day. And we could even turn down the settings to get even more FPS, although I was happy with the 30, let's make that clear. The 1% and 0.1% lows were 21.4 FPS and 16.4 FPS respectively. And that's not too bad. Finally, 3 d Mark gave us a graphic score of 3049 and an overall score of 3437 for the performance of this graphics card. So overall, it appears like if this graphics card had a bit more performance and a bit more memory, we could actually get good FPS in some games. 
So then I had the brilliant idea of using another RX 580 2040 ASP in Crossfire to see if I could increase the performance of these games, but while also keeping the six month iFinity experience. So for this, I used this RX 580 2040 ASP with 16 gigabytes of RAM, although Crossfire means we will only have four available. And then I downloaded some older drivers that still support Crossfire. After running 3D Mark Timeswide, the results were really good and got me excited. But in practice, this is how it went. GTA 5 should have worked, but kept giving me a black screen. Red Dead Redemption 2 said the drivers were out of date. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we saw a massive increase from 21.1 FPS to 23.8 FPS. Spider-Man didn't even work. Cyberpunk didn't work. Resident Evil 3 didn't work. And CS2, we saw the biggest increase of about 10 FPS higher than before. So yeah, finding recent games that actually work well with Crossfire is like trying to buy an RTX 3080 in 2021. Overall, this GPU is not the best at gaming on six monitors. Even though some older and less demanding games will work, buying the 8GB version would also be very beneficial. However, having said this, you will get pretty good FPS on one monitor at 1080p or even 1440p, while also being able to connect an extra 5 displays in extended mode, and I think that's where the positives are of this card. You won't need loads of expensive adapter splitter cables, which have their limitations, and you can keep everything mostly tidy. Using this graphics card in extended mode was actually really useful because you can have 6 displays each with a different window. It's probably too many monitors for me, but I can see why someone would want this if they have a lot of tabs that they need to keep open, like opening a load of stock charts or watching 6 videos of mine at once. Thanks for watching.